Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new confirmations and also new analysis of the unusual structure within our own galaxy, within the Milky Way. The so-called warp of the Milky Way galaxy. With the warp itself being discovered not so long ago, but many different additional confirmations and different studies have now made it pretty clear that our galaxy is not actually flat after all. In some sense, it resembles a typical Pringles chip, which is very unusual but also mathematically makes a lot of sense. But in this video I wanted to also talk about what we've recently discovered and what we know about this warp so far. But first of all, it's somewhat difficult for us to see the shape of our own galaxy simply because of where we're located. We are inside a galaxy, so seeing the shape here is practically impossible. We can sort of try to imagine what all of this looks like by looking at certain distant stars, but without seeing the motion of these stars, it would be impossible for us to know what the galaxy really looks like. But in most scientific textbooks, and also in some sense in most high schools, we've always been taught that the galaxy is more or less flat. It sort of resembles this. And this is actually what the galaxy looks like in pretty much any computer simulation that I have as well. And here is one of the many examples of this simplified model of the Milky Way galaxy. From the side it looks completely flat. But in the last few years we've been making some major discoveries. One of the bigger discoveries from last year was the unusual formation known as the Radcliffe Wave. This unusual and really humongous formation is essentially a kind of a wave-like structure that many stars form around the Sun, with the Sun itself apparently traveling across the Radcliffe wave as well. Now this is just one of the many signs of unusual deformations inside our own galaxy. More of these signs were discovered by the Polish scientists, who identified several major deformations inside the Milky Way by looking at different distant stars as you can see in this particular image that they created. And interestingly, this is not unexpected. As a matter of fact, the majority of these galaxies we've seen out there are never really perfectly flat. The best example here is actually this beautiful warp galaxy known as UGC 3697. The warp within this galaxy has been studied quite thoroughly, and today we understand that it's most likely, just like so many other warps, created through some sort of a massive interaction with another object somewhere nearby, usually a relatively massive dwarf galaxy. A galaxy that's not powerful enough to absorb or to disrupt the galaxy, but that's still massive enough to dislodge a lot of these stars within the larger galaxy and to create a kind of a wave inside of it. Here's what this galaxy looks like if you were to look at it with a typical telescope. And so something similar most likely happened in the Milky Way galaxy. And today a lot of scientists, uh, at least in the past year or so, mostly came to the conclusion that it was probably caused by this very strange and somewhat mysterious galaxy known as Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. A galaxy that has a lot of influence on the Milky Way and potentially may have also influenced the formation of different stars in the Milky Way as well. Especially when it passes through the disk of the Milky Way, it has a tendency to dislodge a lot of gas and this gas then sort of clumps together forming new stars. There has been a speculation that this galaxy was possibly even responsible for the formation of our own Sun as well, essentially through the deformation of gas as it passes through the Milky Way galaxy. But every time it passes through the galaxy it also deforms it, thus creating this unusual ripple that you see right here. But this is the older simulation, based on the older simulations and older studies analyzing this work. Today we actually have a lot more data from different telescopes including some of the most incredible data coming out of Gaia Telescope, the telescope that's been instrumental in helping us develop an extremely accurate nearby map of all of the stars and all of the various types of objects moving across the night skies with extremely specific details of both their motion, their temperatures, and a lot of other star properties as well. But all of this data was also combined with Sloan Digital Sky Survey and specifically the experiment known as Apache Point Observatory Galactic Evolution Experiment, also known as Apogee 2. And so by combining the data from Gaia Telescope with the data from SDSS, the scientists were able to create a really accurate three-dimensional map of, well, basically the nearby space and the galaxy itself. This allowed us to see how this warp moves across the night skies and most importantly allowed us to establish the overall size and the motion of this warp. Here's what all of this looks like. Now this might actually look a little bit fast, but notice how this is in millions of years. 
And interestingly, this also allowed the scientist in this paper to calculate that the warp moves across the galaxy every 440 million years. Let's actually make it a little bit slower here. So every 440 million years, the warp moves around Milky Way, which is roughly around the double amount of time it takes for the solar system to move across the galaxy. This means that the warp moves a little bit slower than the typical motion of the star, which also implies that the stars go through the warp most likely going up and down or possibly above and below the galactic plane and then return back to their normal motion when they leave the warp behind because the stars do seem to move faster than the warp. With one of the more unusual discoveries coming out of this new paper that you can find in the description below, being in regards to the shape of this warp, it seems to be lopsided as the scientists refer to it, which implies that one of the sides here is a little bit more pronounced than the other side with one side experiencing something a little bit more dramatic than the opposite side. The scientists were also able to identify where this warp officially starts, and the distance from the center of the galaxy that they suggest is roughly around 27 to 28,000 light years away. Now, the current estimates for the distance to the galactic center from the solar system put us at around 25 to 26,000 light years, which also means that we are probably not really inside the warp. Which also means that that Radcliffe I mentioned might be something entirely different and may have been created by some other phenomenon. Or it's possible that we just don't really understand how all of this stuff forms and we need to study these warps in more detail in order to learn what's happening here. The other unusual discovery here was that the younger stars seem to be more affected by this than the older stars. Stars that were 6 to 9 billion years old were not as warped or not as affected by this warp as the stars that were less than 3 billion years old. And here the scientists believe that it's something to do with the passage of the nearby dwarf galaxy, most likely Sagittarius dwarf galaxy, that did happen 3 billion years ago. But the exact reasons for this and the exact explanations for these differences are currently not really clear. Either way though, it does seem like Milky Way galaxy, like about 50 to 70% of all of the other disk galaxies, is indeed warped just like this one right here, maybe not to this extent though, but still warped enough as you can see in this simulation to have a very pronounced upper edge and lower edge, which isn't something that I guess most of us learned back in high school when we were learning about galaxies. Either way, a really interesting discovery, a very interesting analysis, and definitely something to look forward to once we discover how all of this happened and what all of this means for the future of our galaxy. Until we learn more though, as always, check out the paper and all of the other relevant data in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.